Well, welcome back everyone to Math 118. Um, this week we start our study of rational functions and uh, hopefully it won't take us that long and we can jump into our next chapter. Okay, so what is a rational function? Well, a rational function we might call lowercase r of x. And it looks like this, p of x divided by q of x where p and q are polynomials with no common factors. We will look at what happens when you have common factors right towards the end of this set of lectures, um, but for now we're going to consider them without common factors. And this is where our discussion of domain becomes a little bit more important, right? Because um, q of x as a polynomial likely has a few zeros, right? Um, all, all of these polynomials will be exclusively um, considered as um, real numbers. All of the zeros, we will only care about real numbers. Um, the complex numbers gave us some really interesting theory for polynomials, um, but, but, but for these rational functions, we, we only care about um, real zeros. But this q of x is likely to have at least one or two real zeros. And well, that would mean there would be values of x for which we're dividing by zero, right? And, and so that, as we've uh, said in the past, leads to some uh, non-ideal behavior, right? Let's take a look at sort of the prototypical rational function, f of x equals one over x, okay? And we can make ourselves a little table of values, say x and f of x. And we can, you know, say what happens to f at 1. Well, 1 over 1 is 1. What about negative 1? Well, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, right? We can throw these on an axis. Maybe something like that. Okay. So we've got this point, right? And we've got this point, 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. What else is there? Well, 2 goes to 1 half, negative 2 goes to negative 1 half, sorry, two, 2 goes to 1 half, and negative 2 goes to negative 1 half, so that would mean we're about there. And you could consider on, right, at, at 3 we'd be at a third, at negative 3 we'd be at negative third, and etc. right? But what happens at, say, at, at, at x equals 1 half? Well, 1 over 1 half is 2, right? What about negative 1 half? Well, that would be negative 2, right? So we can add these points. Well, like what happens as we get even closer, right? What about like 1 over 10? Well, at 1 over 10, we're going to do 1 over 1 over 10 for an output of 10, right? So our function is going to, as we get closer and closer to this x-axis, our function is going to approach infinity, right? This is why we don't like dividing by zero, because it takes our nice smooth function, sends it up that way, but over here it takes our nice smooth function and sends it down that way, okay? And, and notice, right, this is sort of the behavior of taking one over something, right? If, if you take one, and you divide it by some really, really big number, right? Well, you're always going to get a pretty small number. On the alternative, right, that's, that's what's happening out here. On the alternative, if we take 1 and we divide it by a really, really small number, we end up with a very, very large number, right? There's this, in, like, like there's this inverse relationship. One gives us the other, okay? So some of the notation that we used right here, right, we, we described this thing going to infinity as we walked this way, right? To sort of formalize that, we have some notation. Okay, and let's say let a be a real number, okay? And then we say x goes to a from the left, okay? So this is x 
goes to A from the left. Right, that little negative sign up here tells us we're going from the left. Right, if we have, you know, here's our number line, here's A, this guy, you know, looks like approaching A going this way, right? Similarly, we can define X going to A from the positive side, right? X goes to A from the right, okay? If we throw on, you know, that, that, that would look like this guy looks at approaching A this way, right? And then we're familiar with, you know, something like X goes to infinity, X goes to negative infinity, right? So with this, we can say, as X goes to zero from the right, Y goes to infinity. And as X goes to zero from the left, Y goes to negative infinity, right? So let's use this to graph something, okay? Let's call this guy R of X. And let's say he's equal to 2 over x minus 3, right? You know, 2 is a polynomial. It's a very simple polynomial, but it's still a, it's still a polynomial. And x minus 3 is one of our linear polynomials, right? But notice that we can write this as 2 times 1 over x minus 3, right? Which is the same thing as 2 times f of x minus 3, if we recall that back here, we called f of x 1 over x, right? So I guess I'll just write that right here. f of x is 1 over x, okay? So if you remember, right, this is the language of a function transformation, right? If we add our little axes, what we're doing is we're shifting our whole graph, um, three units to the right, and then scaling it by two, right? So what would have been our old origin is now here, okay? And we originally had the point one, one, but so now we walk over one and up two, we walk over two and up one, and so on. And then the same way here, we get our graph, okay? We have that same behavior of going to infinity, Okay. And so we write down our graph and we seek to describe a little bit what's happening, say, here and here. Okay, we're going to define these terms in just a second. But I'm going to tell you that this guy is called a vertical asymptote. Right, notice that this would be sort of our value of A from here. And then this guy is called our horizontal asymptote. One more example for you like that, okay. Let's say we want to graph, let's call this guy S of X equal to three X plus five over x plus 2. And you may be kind of stuck on how to go about this, okay? But um, what we can do is we can actually divide these guys. So let's go x plus 2 into 3x plus 5, okay? Noticing that these are the same degree, right? We can do this and divide it and see what we get. Right, we should have a 3 right there, so we would get 3x plus 6, and then when we subtract this, we get a negative 1. Okay, so that tells me that I can write s of x as 3 minus 1 over x plus 2. Right, but if we name f of x to be um, 1 over x, we can write this as 3 minus f of x plus 2, right? We move it two units to the left, we flip it upside down, and then we move it up three units. So just like that, we can throw down a graph of this function. 
Maybe we get our axes to look like that. And we know that that center point of our graph, right, it's going to go two units to the right and three units up, so right there. And I can place the points that I remember being on the graph before with the knowledge that everything should flip vertically, right? Drawing that out, we're going to get something like this. Okay. Again, with a horizontal asymptote, which we will define shortly, and a vertical asymptote like that. So I've sort of given you an intuitive picture of what this thing called an asymptote is. But let's actually define it explicitly. Okay. We say that x equals a is a vertical asymptote. of the graph y equals f of x. If y goes to either plus or minus infinity, as x approaches a from the left or right, OK? So I guess we need four little examples, right? Because there's two combinations for each. So here are our four axes, okay? We'll mark this point as A in each of them. Right about there. Just call it A. And so if we have, say, Y approaches infinity as X approaches A from the left, Right, that would mean that as x approaches a from the left, y goes to infinity, something like that. And so a vertical asymptote is right there. Although I'm a little far. There we go, something like that. Right? If we instead were to have a situation like this, we actually move a over a little bit. Maybe a is right there. If I approach this way and then go to infinity, right, this is y goes to infinity as x goes to a from the right, okay? And then similarly, we could have something like this, y comes in and goes to negative infinity with our vertical asymptote right there at x equals a. This is y goes to negative infinity as x goes to a from the left. And finally, we have x approaching a from the right and y going to negative infinity. The vertical asymptote right there. And the description is y goes to negative infinity as x goes to a from the right. So this is our concept of a vertical asymptote, okay? But we can also have the concept of a horizontal asymptote. So the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph y equals f of x if y approaches b as x approaches either plus or minus infinity. Once again, we'll break this into sort of two little cases. Horizontal asymptotes are a little bit weirder than vertical asymptotes. So you might have a horizontal asymptote like that. And we'll have x going to positive infinity y can do whatever, but it kind of comes back down and eventually approaches that line, okay? What's important to note here is that my function can totally cross this asymptote, right? Remember that these asymptotes are caused by division by zero, right? Um, so we can't ever cross them. 
But these horizontal asymptotes, these have to do with the end behavior. Maybe going to the right, our function is very, very large, but as it kind of meanders to negative infinity, it tapers off and approaches that line. Okay. And I will erase that guy. And so we have here that y goes to b as x goes to negative infinity. Okay, so let's do an example of this. Okay. So let's graph r of x is 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we want to state the domain and range. So the first thing we'll look for is our vertical asymptote. henceforth abbreviated VA, okay? So we have R of X is 2X squared minus 4X plus 5, but that bottom guy, well, that's going to factor into an X minus 1 squared, right? Which puts my vertical asymptote at X equals 1, right? Because remember, these vertical asymptotes come from division by 0, Right? And, well, x equals 1 is where we're dividing by 0. So that means that that's where our vertical asymptote comes from. Next, we will look for our horizontal asymptote, henceforth abbreviated HA. Okay? So here's my question for you. Okay. We talked about end behavior as a polynomial. So this is our polynomial. We have one polynomial, x squared minus 4x plus 5, divided by a second one, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. And here's my question for you with this. Is what happens to these polynomials as x gets large? Right? Well, re remember that um, we have these things called our controlling terms, right? As x gets very, very large, these terms basically vanish away and they don't have any effect on the value of our polynomial, at least not a meaningful effect on it, right? Which means that as x goes to positive or negative infinity, this guy starts to look an awful lot like 2x squared over x squared because remember these guys just drop away. Okay, well, 2x squared over x squared is 2, right? Because x is arbitrary large, so we don't need to worry about um, dividing by 0. So that means that as x gets really, really large, well, my function is going to approach the constant function 2. So that's my horizontal asymptote, right? My horizontal asymptote is y equals two. So now let's put this together and try to graph this guy. Let's put our axes something like this. Okay. I know that my vertical asymptote is at x equals one. So I'll draw that guy. I know that my horizontal asymptote is at y equals two. And are there any other points that I know? Well, I know that if I plug in 0 to this, these, these terms drop and these terms drop, so we get 5 over 1, or 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And we'll plug in a table of values for some more. Okay. So we have x and r of x. So we know at 0, we're at 5. If we plug in 2, we get 8 minus 8 for 0 plus 5 is 5 divided by 1. So we also get 5. Okay. So this guy sort of mirrors itself over here. 
okay? Guess I'll label this guy because that wasn't exactly obvious. So this is one and this is two, okay? So we have a step of one in either direction here. Let's see what happens as we get closer to our asymptote. Let's say 0 0.5. Well, if you run 0 0.5 through this, we're going to get 14 out the other side. And similarly, if we run 1.5 through this, we're going to get 14 out the other side. So whatever this guy does, he's going to continue like this, right? Go up towards this asymptote. And we know that it's going to level out as we go this way. So we can graph our function. It's going to look a little something like that. And then one final thing on this guy, okay? Our domain is not quite all real numbers, okay? It's the set of all x, everything but x equals 1, right? And our range... Well, our range is, um, looks like we have all of the positive things except for anything less than 2, right? So we have y is less than 2. And go ahead and puzzle out for yourself why we have y is strictly less than 2 and not less than or equal to 2. So now, of course, we want a little bit, um simpler or, or um, algorithmic way to find our asymptotes, okay? So let's, let's talk about that, okay? Let's talk about finding asymptotes. So let's say we have some rational function r of x, okay? We have a polynomial on top, which is going to look like a n x to the n, a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, plus and all the way down to a 1 x plus a 0, okay? And since this is rational, we got to divide it by some other polynomial, say b sub m x to the m plus b sub n minus 1, x to the m minus 1, plus and down to b 1 x plus b0, okay? And for simplicity's sake, let's call these polynomials, I don't know, p of x over q of x, okay? So as we've said before, the vertical asymptotes are the lines x equals a, right, where q of a equals 0, right? So, so our, our vertical asymptotes are the lines where the denominator is 0. And then what about for horizontal asymptotes? Okay, and our, our horizontal asymptotes are actually divided into three situations, okay? So if n is less than m, then R is a horizontal asymptote of Y equals zero. So if the degree of P is less than the degree of X, well then my horizontal asymptote is zero. If N is equal to M, they have the same degree, well then R has a horizontal asymptote of y equals a n over b m, the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if n is greater than m, our third case, then r actually has no horizontal asymptote. And we'll see why that is the case a little bit later. One more example for you before we go on to talk about formally graphing arbitrary rational functions, okay? So let's say find the vertical 
and horizontal asymptotes. of, we'll say, r of x equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So for our vertical asymptotes, we want to factor the denominator. Our numerator can stay the same, so 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And our denominator, well, it looks like that's going to become 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. Okay. And so that would give me two vertical asymptotes. Right. We have x equals 1 half and negative 2, because that's one of our zeros is 1 half, and our other zero is negative 2. Horizontal asymptote. Well, we have our degrees are the same, right? So that means that as x goes to positive negative infinity, r of x is approximately equal to 3x squared over 2x squared, which is equal to 3 over 2, right? So that's my horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 over 2. Okay, and if you were to, you know, go through the time to graph this or throw it in your favorite graphing calculator, you would see that those are indeed our asymptotes.